Before the ending of the day, creator of the world, we pray. Your grace and peace to us allow and guard and keep all people now. Welcome to Evening Prayers for today, Friday the 28th of October. This week our readings are stories and signs of Jesus, mainly from St Matthew's Gospel, but today in St John's. And we're following some elements of the order in the Methodist Worship Book for prayer in the evening. Let's keep silence. Not to us, Lord, not to us, but to your name be the glory because of your love and faithfulness. God and Father of all, as this day ends, we offer up its hours in praise to you. As we spend this time of quiet, unite us by your spirit in praise of Christ our Lord, in whom we make our prayer. Amen. So yes, this evening our reading switches to St John's Gospel. John's Gospel is structured differently from the others. John presents us a long series of conversations between Jesus and his disciples as he approaches the end of his earthly ministry. So in that Gospel, in St John's Gospel, we read from, from chapter 15, verses 18 to 21, and then 26 to 27. The words of Jesus. If you belong to the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you do not belong to the world, and I have chosen you out of it, the world will hate you. Do you remember what I said to you? The servant is not greater than his master. If they have persecuted me, they will persecute you as well. If they have followed my teaching, they will also follow yours. They will do all these things to you as my disciples, because they do not know the one who sent me. And in verse 26. When the Helper comes, that is, the Spirit of Truth, who comes from the Father, and whom I myself will send to you from the Father, he will speak plainly about me, and you yourselves will also speak plainly about me, for you have been with me from the first. We keep a moment's silence. So although we're in a different gospel, we pick up nevertheless from where we left off yesterday. Jesus is clear with his friends about the cost of discipleship. John, of course, was writing some time after Jesus' life, writing into the life of the early church in which persecution was a possibility for any of the followers of this Jesus. If they have persecuted me, they will persecute you as well, he said. We tend to think today that persecution of this kind is a thing of the past, but of course it isn't. There are many places where a fervent faith of one form is hostile to others. Religious persecution is not an experience only of Christians. And we can well remind ourselves that it has been a feature between different branches of our own faith throughout history. We lived in Lewis in Sussex for many years. It's known as the capital of bonfire and November the 5th is massive with processions and multiple bonfires and many, many fireworks. And part of that is a reminder every year of a group of Protestant Christians who were executed by burning in Lewis High Street in the reign of Queen Mary as England zigzagged between Reformed and Roman allegiance. But bring it closer to home. Even as Christians in our own country, we know that Jesus' perspective is not always welcome. If we take Jesus' perspective, we stand against the tendency to dehumanize and despise those who are not like us. We stand for what is true and honest. We heard earlier this week of the story of the Pharisee and the tax collector, the one despising the other, and again from Phil Jones last Sunday. And that perspective is not always welcome. We are expected, not universally, but by some, we are expected to keep our faith within ourselves. But as Professor Charles Coulson once almost said in a different context, God is the God of the whole of life with no gaps. And that perspective is not always welcome. If our faith does not inform and change the way we live our everyday lives, then surely it's not a real faith. If it does, 
the world may despise us as it despised Jesus. That perspective is not always welcome. For us in this country, that unwelcomeness may not be an everyday experience, but most of us have encountered it at some time, I guess. But then too, we will have experienced the other side of Jesus's warning, the promise, the power of the helper, a supporter, a strengthener. Older translations speak of the comforter. Now we think of comfort as warmth, a refuge, something to sink into, but a warm sweater, for example, can be a strong windproof garment to go out, out into the cold and the storm. And as the hymn we've already quoted once this week says, we stretch out a helping hand to wrestlers with the troubled sea. What Jesus is saying is a message for us today as we stand for truth in turbulent times. As yesterday's song said, stand like a rock and don't be afraid. And so to that hymn, Francis Habergill's prayer, that the strength which Jesus promises will spill out into our interactions with others who also need it. In the old Methodist hymn book, this is number 781.
Jesus said that the spirit, like the wind, blows where it wants to. You don't know where it comes from or where it's going. The spirit is God unbounded, dangerous, but inspiring and invigorating. This is the spirit who Jesus promised would be with us. So in the strength of the spirit, let's pray. Gracious and holy God, we confess that we have sinned against you and against our neighbour. Your spirit gives light, but we have preferred darkness. Your spirit gives wisdom, but we have been foolish. Your spirit gives power, but we have trusted in our own strength. For the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, forgive our sins and enable us by your Spirit to serve you in joyful obedience to the glory of your name. Amen. There is now no condemnation for those who live in union with Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life has set us free from the law of sin and death. Amen. Thanks be to God. As I record this, new people are preparing to take over the leadership of our country. We pray always for leaders who will recognize and respond to the needs of all people, here and in the troubled places of the world, and to the crisis of environment and warfare and unrest. So we pray for ourselves and for others. Lord, we pray that your spirit may be poured out not only on those who are already Christians, but on all people and nations. In a world full of conflicting drives and forces, we pray that your spirit may take our powers and energies and bring them to fulfillment and harmony in your service, in building and not destroying. We pray for all who seek truth and thus honour you. May your spirit make true in their experience what Christ has achieved for all the world. We pray for people in all those situations of tension and conflict, where the welfare of many depends on the integrity of a few. May your spirit enable people to be honest, to turn aside from advantage, and to seek the benefit of those whom they serve. We pray for the poor and hungry of the world, the ill and the anguished, the dying and the bereaved. May your spirit distribute both the skill and the love which can bring healing and true comfort. And we pray for those approaching new positive chapters in their lives. Spirit of Christ, be with them as they move into new, new areas and take on new challenges. And our prayer handbook today shares with Christians in Central and Southern Europe. In that region, alphabetically, today we share with fellow Methodists in North Macedonia, still establishing itself as a new nation, Poland, Romania, Serbia, Slovakia, and Switzerland. In our own conference, we pray with neighbours in the Wolverhampton and Shrewsbury district, and their chair, Rachel Parkinson, who has written our following prayer. Lord, we long to be the church of your desire, whom to a weary world your hope imparts. Yet we are weary too. Low burns the fire on the mean altar of our broken hearts. Lord, draw us to your hearth, where burns the flame of love we cannot fathom nor outpace. There root us, ground us. Help us to reclaim our calling as expression of your grace that seeks without exception to engage and brings the margins to the center stage. Sustaining Spirit of God, give power to the faint and strengthen the powerless, so that in the ministry to which you call us, we will wait upon you to renew ourselves and to be lifted up on eagles' wings, to run and not be weary, to walk and not faint. Amen. And we share the Lord's Prayer, the universal prayer of the church in every language. So please share using any form or language which is appropriate for you. We say together, Our Father in heaven, 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for sharing this time together. Wherever you are, whatever your faith, may the blessing of God, God beyond us, God alongside us, and God unbounded, be with us all, tonight and always. Amen. <laughs>